It's 2 a.m. Your entire cloud environment is down. Revenue, bleeding. Customers, furious. Your team, scrambling. And you, staring at the one question no leader ever wants to face, what now? It's not a hypothetical scenario. Cyber attacks, natural disasters, and let's face it, plain human error are constant threats to your business. And when they strike, they don't just hit your systems. They hit your bottom line. Downtime is expensive. On average, every hour of downtime costs enterprises over $300,000. For some businesses, it's millions. But that's not the scariest part. The real damage? It's your reputation. Customers expect reliability. They expect security. And when you fail to deliver, they don't just leave, they tell others why they left. But here's the thing, it doesn't have to be this way. If you've got a clear, effective disaster recovery plan, you won't just survive these disasters, you'll thrive because of your preparation. So today, we're breaking down exactly how to build a disaster recovery plan for your cloud environment that's not just good on paper, but ready for real-world chaos. Let's start with what makes cloud disaster recovery so unique. Traditional disaster recovery? It's about protecting physical servers, on-premise environments that rely on one or two specific data centers. But the cloud? It's different. It's distributed. Your systems are spread across multiple regions, relying on layers of redundancy built into platforms like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. Sounds great, right? But here's the catch. With the cloud, you're not just managing your own environment. You're managing a web of interconnected services, APIs, regions, and third-party providers. It's a complex ecosystem, and if you don't account for every dependency, you're at risk. Yes, the cloud makes recovery faster when it's done right. But if your recovery plan doesn't address these unique challenges, it could leave you scrambling. So, how do you create a disaster recovery plan that actually works? Let's break it down into four actionable steps. Step one, know your RTO and RPO. This is foundational. Your recovery time objective RTO is how quickly you need to get back online. Is it one hour? For hours? A full day? Your recovery point objective RPO is how much data you can afford to lose. A week's worth of data? A day? 10 minutes? These aren't just technical terms, they're business critical decisions. They determine how much risk your company is willing to accept. And if you haven't defined them clearly, you're flying blind. Here's a tip, start with your business's priorities. Which systems are mission critical? Think customer portals, financial transactions, or real-time data streams. These need the most aggressive RTO and RPO targets. Lesser used systems? They can wait. Step two, choose the right cloud DR strategy. Once you know your RTO and RPO, it's time to choose a disaster recovery strategy. Let's talk options. Backup and restore, this is the simplest and cheapest option. You back up your data to the cloud and restore it when disaster strikes. The downside is slow. Restoring from a backup can take hours or even days. Pilot light, think of this as having a bare bones environment running at all times, ready to scale up when needed. It's faster than backup and restore, but still keeps costs relatively low. Warm standby, with warm standby, you've got a scaled down version of your production environment running 24 seven. When disaster hits, you scale it up. This is great for mid-tier businesses that need quick recovery, but don't wanna pay for a fully redundant setup. Hot standby or multi-site, this is the gold standard. Your environment is fully mirrored, running in real time across multiple regions. It's expensive, but for businesses that can't afford downtime, it's non-negotiable. Each strategy has its pros and cons. The key is aligning the strategy with your budget and your business goals. Step three, don't just plan, test. Here's where most businesses drop the ball. They make a plan, but never test it. Let me ask you, when's the last time you simulated a disaster in your environment? If your answer is never or a long time ago, that's a problem. Plans that look great on paper can crumble in real world scenarios. Maybe a script fails. Maybe a team member doesn't know their role. Maybe your SaaS vendor's failover system doesn't work the way you expected. The solution, test your disaster recovery plan regularly. Simulate outages, run failover drills, find the gaps and fix them before disaster strikes. 
Step four, mind the SaaS gap. If you're running SaaS applications, and let's be honest, who isn't? You've got an extra layer of complexity. Disaster recovery for SaaS isn't just about your infrastructure. It's about understanding the dependencies behind your apps. For example, what happens if the API your SaaS relies on goes down? What if your provider's storage region suffers an outage? One weak link can bring your entire stack crashing down. Here's a pro tip. Don't just assume your SaaS vendors have you covered. Ask them the tough questions. What's their disaster recovery plan? How do they handle outages? What's their RTO and RPO? Their answers will tell you whether you need additional failover plans to cover the gaps. Disasters aren't a matter of if, they're a matter of when. So, let me ask you, will you be ready? Or will you be one of the businesses scrambling to pick up the pieces? Take control of your disaster recovery today. Found this valuable? Watch our playlists for more practical, executive-level insights on cloud architecture and digital transformation, and leading your business into the next era of growth. Simplify the cloud, amplify the impact.